Hey, what's up, everybody? Life Without Limits. We're here with... Cristian Portilla. And... Mateo. And Mateo Morales. And yeah, here we are, back again. We took a little bit of an L. Hey, hey, yeah, a tough one. A tough L, yeah. So you should if, talk about that L real quick. Yeah, for sure, of course. No, absolutely. Contact. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> it is. So, like I was telling you earlier today, like we uh, actually had recorded our first episode. And we were going to edit it the very next day, and his laptop got stolen. So, yep, here so now we this are. This is new episode. This is new episode one, and there is a lost episode out there. So if you have that lost episode, we would definitely like that back. <laughs> the lost file, and maybe everything else that you took along. Right, oh, yeah, and everything else you took along the way. So, so that's that. Yeah, so we're here with Christian. Yeah, my name is Cristian Portilla. Thank you so much for having me, Francisco. Do you want to tell everybody how we met? Yeah, sure. Uh, we actually met at the gym. <laughs> like, uh, working out. Uh, I started a new gym like three weeks ago. And I think you I were there too. like my first week. Was that, was that your first, first week, week too? Yeah. Oh, damn. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I felt like you had been there a while. No. Oh, wow. It's only been three weeks. Yeah. see. Damn. That's awesome. And so we started. We died together. We died together <laughs> on a cardio day. day. But hey, you pushed me that day. Like you, because of you, I think I finished. Because you were just like, "Come on, keep going." And I was just like, "All right, I don't know this girl, but like, she's telling me to keep going, so I'm gonna keep going." <laughs> like, well, you pushed me too. Actually. Well, I thought you had literally been there for a while. Like no. I thought you would. That was like maybe like you just had been there going to the gym. No, but to like in full disclosure, I did go to the gym in Miami, which okay. is uh, where I used to live before I moved here a month ago. Um, and I did CrossFit over there, so it helped. It's different, but the same. Yeah. You know? Same, same, different, different. But obviously, CrossFit is more like not as much cardio, more like weightlifting, etc. Mm -hmm. But um, for like this past week, um, we just happened to be taking the same class in the mornings. Yeah. And, like i'm very sleepy when i walk in there and you for some reason always know all the workouts so i'm like i'm gonna stick with this guy because he knows what he's doing <laughs> and i'll be like no francisco that's not the movement he's like yeah i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it is <laughs> joe <laughs> yeah. and the guy's like yeah coach is like yeah that's the movement i'm like okay that's it i'm done saying no like whatever you say goes um but yeah so i moved here from miami a month ago I'm a, a freelance journalist, culture journalist, podcaster. I host the podcast Meet Them Mondays in Miami, which is, well, in, yeah, before I moved here, which is a culture podcast. And um, I focus on community culture and lifestyle. And when I interview people, I just always want to put like a human to the story. You know, I yeah. love to humanize people and all the stories that I do. Um, and so in Miami, I definitely have like my street cred in just really putting on for my community. Like I'm a proud Miami and I'm from Hialeah for anybody who knows where that's at in Miami. Um, Never <laughs> been three, to Miami. 305 till I die. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a Miami pride thing. I didn't. I didn't know that Texans were so proud, but like I thought I was proud of where I came from. But uh -huh. I'm a, I, can I curse yeah. on Yeah, here? of course, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers you are proud as fuck out here. It's an like, honor to be from Texas. Literally. You know what's sad, though? Everybody, like, thinks the motto is... Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with Texas. That's right? not even the motto. But that's not even the motto. What's... A lot of people get confused what the motto is. It's actually Tejas. And that is uh, friends. Or friendly. That's it. Yeah? That's all the motto is. It's just friends you you want me to tell you something so i never had an opinion or an idea of like what texas was or how people in texas were i had visited texas before because i went to austin like uh -huh. just out of i want to see austin in school whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah and um and i f i love texas like i it's true everybody is super friendly and um and it's kind of crazy because my friend cynthia just came over like from miami this past weekend to visit and just we were with all our girls hanging out it was kind of like girls trip time whatever uh -huh. and we were sitting on the grass outside of like this golf course waiting for our other friends to get there so we could go on a hike and we were just chilling on the grass and some lady stops and she puts her window down and she's like are you girls okay and my friend cynthia and i we look at the lady and we're like what and she's like are you girls okay mm -hmm. and we're like 
yeah. And she's like, oh, okay. I just thought maybe you guys like blew needed a tire, something, yeah. needed help. <laughs> All right. And we're like, and I'm like, oh, no, we're good. Thank you. And she's like, okay, have a great day. And then obviously since I'm new here and Cynthia's like, what the fuck, you uh-huh. know? You're like, she's I don't like, know either. Yeah. And Cynthia's like, yo, like people out here are different. And I'm like, yo, sin. I'm like, I'm getting kind of like used to that because... Yeah. In Miami, I'm sorry, that doesn't happen like that. Like, you are not, like, really friendly. You don't stay, like, get in people's business. People don't get in your business. Like, you're not stopping and asking people, like, hey, do you need something? Like, no, like. Yeah. So do you say when you first moved here, would you say you saw that it kind of was, like, a nosy thing? Like, where they were kind of being nosy? Or did no, you just kind of, like, take it? Accept- it was It was nice to me. Because you like, could feel the vibe that it was coming off in a nice facts. way. Yeah, and I'm, like, a spiritual person, so I move, like, like a lot, like, energetically. Mm-hmm. So, like, if I feel good energetically about someone, like, I'll pursue those, like, I'll, I'll receive people however I feel energetically, you know? And sometimes I'm wrong, but most of the time I'm not. And, um, like, even before I moved here, I had visited twice before I moved. Once in November, once in December, and now in January. Like, actually, the right at the end of January, like, right beginning of February. And long story short, um, when I was here in December, like this lady was like you know talking to me at a restaurant and then she's like merry christmas and that i know it sounds so like normal to you guys Uh but to me it's like merry christmas (laughs) like just like i know but but no, we're not laughing at you. I'm no, just like, we're that's, laughing at the fact that that's a thing. That that's a thing, that it's just mind-blowing to us. Because I guess, like, I mean, I've lived here. I haven't lived here my whole life. Like, when my dad was in the military, so we moved every three years. But I landed here when I was, like, in second grade. So I, I say that I grew up here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's like a, just, like, a normal thing for us. People here are just mad friendly. I love the customer service. I love the 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 warmth that I feel here. Um, and I'm just Texas is a vibe and yeah. especially like the talent that comes out of like Texas is dope and even like Houston itself um the parks the museums just like the few things that I've experienced in the month here mm-hmm. I'm I'm just I love it the weather though let's talk about y'all weather <laughs> it's bipolar all right? the weather four seasons in the week <laughs> in, in the day but just wait till summer it'll balance out and it'll only be summer so it's going to yeah, get we'll to a point that. where it's like, I, what's the weather like in Miami in the summer? Always summer. And Always in the summer, summer. So like, it's like, it's even we, like it's an humid. Oven. And it's humid. Well, so then you'll be used to it. You'll be good. Yeah. But by summertime, it'll get to that point to where it's just like literally 85 degrees at night. Mosquitoes are everywhere. And we have passed winter. Oh my we god. So the winter, winter the the big winter freeze, the winter wonderland that just happened was like my second week here in Houston. <laughs> and like it snows in Texas. I was like, it's like snows once in the like, no, it doesn't. That's I've, not normal. <laughs> I've literally had to fly places to see snow because I'm a Floridian. I'm a Miami and I yeah. thought like we don't get that. You literally have to go out of your way to see So you've lived in Miami your entire life. Born and raised. Damn. In the Kanye Dade. <laughs> you just so happen to come with the one in hundred years event. Yeah. Right? Because I it never like, snows in Houston. I was like, <laughs> how do I get to Houston and it snows? Is this a sign? <laughs> but it was dope. It was an experience. I mean, it was hard. I got very lucky. I know a lot of people didn't and that shit sucks. So I'm not by any means like glorifying it. It sucked yeah. for a lot of people. No, My did. experience was otherwise... It was like a, a hurricane in Miami, except we just didn't have time to prepare. I don't feel like they, like the people here and like government and like in charge, like really let us know like the gravity of the situation. Yeah, well, At I think they I just, I think they didn't really un- know the gravity of what was going to happen because like I, like we said, it, it never it's happens. Abnormal. It never yeah. happens. Like yeah. never snows here. Like that much snow i mean it snows here we'll get flurries every now and then and we'll get ice at least maybe once a year like to where the roads ice over but were you guys okay like you guys had power yeah we were good i had power the whole time i know his mom had a pipe burst and power went out out, but i had power the whole time but i also live in the airport grid so the same powers the airport powers this neighborhood so even when i do lose power during a hurricane it's never more than like three or four hours oh, okay. so i mean that's a good thing but i kind of feel like an asshole saying that just like because <laughs> for the same reason that you said I'm, you know like because I'm sorry, I, lost, I was okay yeah like while i was had power i lost power maybe three hours the entire week so oh, it's like wow. and it was like on different days like i lost it for one hour one day 30 minutes another day and like an hour and a half the next day yeah. like and then it came back and so 
But every time it went out, I was worried. I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is it. Like, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Honestly, uh, we didn't have power for four days. And we did have water. But um, they had, like, that boiling water in effect thing. So it's not, you know. But we weren't trying to use that water anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So we went to uh, my sister's boyfriend's house. And he had power. And he had water. Thank God. And he lives in the hood. In the hood. Yeah. So we're like, (laughs) yes, the hood came. Right, yeah. and held it down. So when the ice storm happened, were you supposed to start at the gym? Because that's what happened to me. I was supposed to start that Monday, and then the ice storm happened, and Ty was like, uh, "I don't think we're gonna be open." And I was like, "Cool, just let me know whenever y'all are open. I'll show up." So I think I had probably gone maybe like one or two days before that happened. Okay, like I had literally just signed up. So yeah, so I didn't go that whole time that the ice storm happened. So yeah. you moved. You were telling me earlier you kind of moved out here to Houston just on a whim like just moved out here you don't know anybody out here but one person yeah and but like, one person so how I, is that for you so my sis like i told you um my best friend but calling her best friend is like weird to you yeah <laughs> she's like she's my sis um so i knew her and then my mom had kind of like reached out to the family and been and said like hey you know christian is gonna move to texas like just you know fyi and then um one of her cousins was like hey remember my daughter lives out there so one day my mom calls me and she's like yo you know you got family in houston and i was like what and she's like yeah my primo's daughter uh lives over there um and i was like no shit and so she was like yeah i can tell her to reach out to you and you guys can hang out and i was like if she wants to reach out to me and hang out with me yeah by all means but i feel weird like i'm kind of shy when it comes to stuff like that Uh i'm like a extroverted introvert you know i understand so I was like, if she wants to hang out, I'm down. But, like, I'll leave it up to her. And she hit me up, sure enough. And she was like, yo, let's meet up. Like, I'd love to meet you. I love your mom. Like, you know, when I was younger, like, me she and remembered. her, were, yeah, yeah, we yeah. were close. Um, And so I met her up. And we met up at the, uh, in this area called the Woodlands. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Woodlands. It was, it's a vibe out there. Yeah, it's it's nice real out there. cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I really liked it over there. And we went to like this vegetarian spot and um Was it True Food Kitchen? Yes. That place is dope. That place <laughs> is dope. It's freaking good and it's really delicious. And we just met up and I kid you not, we sat down and talked for like four hours. Wow. And it was just so much healing to be had in that conversation. And it was really cool because I came from like, a, like it was like a blank slate. Like she doesn't mm-hmm. know anything about me. I know nothing about her. Yeah. But we're tied by family. By and blood. By blood and by things that have happened to us in our family. Uh huh. So she told me stories about, you know, when when she was growing up and like things with my mom and just how my family like you know the things that my family was into and you know we just talked a lot a lot about a lot of shit and we i felt like it was like therapeutic to have her and have that conversation so that was really cool and then she invited me again um to hang out with her family and so i recently saw her as well for her birthday and it's been nice to like cultivate that relationship that's awesome um, and and have her like just completely like know so much about my family but also be like removed from my life so i could just talk to her about things yeah it was just dope, man. Like, we really um, don't value that much when we have time with family or with our elders yeah. to, like, talk to them about shit. Like, what happened with my with this aunt? What happened with this drama? Why don't these people talk? Like, what's the story yeah. behind this? And she's kind of, like, explaining it all to you. And it's all, like, these things that you saw in childhood, like, happening and not understanding. And she's kind of, like, putting it all together for you. And yeah. you're like oh okay that's what happened yeah yeah and it just it came from a place of love but there was definitely a lot of like healing to be had for sure in that conversation that's awesome and she's just also like i noticed with certain family members like we all have like these certain traits like like some of us are very creative or some of us are very spiritual or some of us are like we have like these common like traits yeah 
Mm-hmm. And I felt like she was one of my people, even though I didn't grow up with her and know her, like yeah. her spirit to me and just she felt familiar. She like, was her the warm, same vibe. Yeah. She, I was like, she's my family for sure, just because yeah. of how the way she was like she is. And it's so crazy because in Spanish, she has a super Colombian accent. Like, you know, I feel my vibe for my family, but she's a Texan. Like she's yeah. a straight up Texan. Like she came from Colombia, was in Miami, t- wanted to get away from the drama and the stuff that was going on with the family and came here because her dad somehow ended up here through a job. He went back to Miami. She was like, I'm staying. Met the love of her life, a white guy, and did her thing. Damn. So. That's awesome. I know. It's also been really shocking for me to see, like, so she showed the you contrast. Has she showed you around anywhere? Or like, um, not really, because she is a little bit older than me, so she's not like trying to be at the clubs yeah. or doing <laughs> shit like that. I but um, but I did go to her house. It's lovely. Um, and and her and her husband do very well for themselves. They have like businesses and stuff like that. And um, even politically, like she, you know, she's a conservative, and she's just like we were so different. But again, same, same, different, yeah, different. You but know? alike. But you just had like. Two two different environments to yeah. grow up in so it's like your environment is everything exactly you know and a lot of people don't realize that is like what you surround yourself with is eventually what you become yeah you know yeah. so but she's just dope and she was just very like at first she was a little scared like you know i'm conservative and i'm like oh please like let like, it out like, yeah like, <laughs> like you know it's fine like wave the flag as high as you want like just be happy and yeah it's just funny how like even the idea of like if I were to like have a flag in my hand and wave it, it would offend someone that I'm literally like waving the flag of the yeah, United the American States. Flag. Of, yeah, yeah, like or if like someone is wearing a mask with the American flag on it, like everybody automatically assumes it's like a political thing. And you could just be someone who just got here from Colombia and you're happy as fuck and you just became a citizen and you're so just grateful for this country and what it's yeah. done for you and what you're gonna get out of it. And people don't even know what the story is and they want to get offended. And one of the things that I've taken back a lot um, with this whole like having these conversations with my family or like even with her who's a conservative is just like kind of like taking back the pride of being an American. And like, yeah. and I've always identified as Latina. Like every time people ask me like, oh, where are you from? I automatically say Colombia because I always just think that they're asking me like, you know, where my family's from, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. in Miami where you have people from all from over. From Cuba, from Dominic all, DR, like yeah, everywhere. Like Nicaragua, Guatemala, El Salvador. So you're literally yeah. just asking like, oh, where are your people from? You know, because yeah. everybody's from all over the place. Mm-hmm. But um, I've really taken back like my, like mi orgullo like my pride to say Mm -hmm. that like i'm proud that i live in the united states of america that has done so many great awesome things for my family for my mom giving me opportunity i've been able to go to school get an education work my ass off like i've had to eat a lot of shit like the United States of America is not perfect no, by any not means at, all. at all. all. We're definitely broken and more separated than we've ever been before, in my opinion. But I'm grateful to be here. Yeah. You know, I'm I mean, grateful. but that's the thing is a lot of people don't realize is we're super privileged to live in this country. And it's like people don't understand that people are coming to this country legally, illegally for a reason. And there's other countries like in China and Hong Kong that like they aspire to be like us. Like they're waving America. They're in the streets protesting, waving American flags because they just believe in our our ideology that like everybody should have a fair chance to prosper and rise, you know. So it's so crazy to me because it's like the things that I see that like our government sometimes does on the does on the federal level is like they advocate in other countries for things that they're trying to make like ban here in a sense so it's like so you'll advocate for like freedom over here but like over here you've it's like you want to take more freedoms away had it been my old self and my cousin would have told me that i would have probably felt some type of way for sure Mm -hmm. and i would have probably like who knows maybe i wouldn't even have given a relationship a fair chance because i would have felt like we're just so different but I'm so glad that I'm past that mentality and I'm so glad that I'm past like this idea of cancel culture and this idea of like 
we can't get along because we're just so different and we yeah. think so different politically. And it's like and we're so. really not that different. I think like a lot of people don't realize that we're libertarians truly. Like most people in America today, at least in our generation or in our age group, uh, is libertarian. Like we believe like, you know, anybody – like if you want to be, you know, trans or gay or like whatever, like you want to call your – but I don't know how many genders there are, like, you know what I'm saying? Or like how they, or whatever they say. Uh, Cause I don't ever study into that. But like, if you want to do that, that's cool. Like, you know, like whatever, do you be you like, you should be allowed to get married. Like you should be allowed to smoke weed. If you want to smoke weed. Like, I think there's just certain fundamental rules that you shouldn't break. Like obviously you just can't go kill someone or like, you know, do super illegal things. But at the end of the day, like, Hey, that's your business. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And as long as, like, we all respect one another and, like, are cool with it, then, like, we'll be good. It'd be great if we could, like, start setting these things back to be, like, the standard. But um, I think that right now, um, I think that there is just this, and I don't want to say there's a war on, but there, I, you know what, fuck it, I'll say it. There's a war on being, like, definitive. There's a war on saying things like, you know how you just said, like, I don't know how many genders there are. But you do uh-huh. know how many genders there are. Yeah. You well, know. I'm saying, like, I don't know how many genders they, they say, say there they are. are. Okay. You know, so, you know? like, I guess that but was like, a better way to put it. Yeah, but they're, but everybody's afraid to be, like, definitive now because they're so scared of, like, hurting and offending and bothering and, you know, getting canceled Definitely. and all this shit. And it's just, like, I... Like, we've gotten so ridiculous with that that, we're, like... We're taking away, like, what America was built on. And, like, that's what, like, really America's, like, fundamentals were built on is, like, you have fundamental rights given to you by God. And I don't have to agree that's with it. you. Yeah, and you don't have to agree with me. I don't have me. to like you. I don't have to agree with you. I don't have to, you know, like, and vote for the same people you do. That's fine. But, like, I do owe you respect. Yeah, because you're I a do. human. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, you're like, still, at the end of the day, you're a human. And I feel human. like now everything, especially, like, with how I used to see things, because I've been there, if I'm going to be, like, honest with you, I was actually before I you know just kind of like how we talk today and just the things that we've been talking about I was thinking about this friend that um when this whole first like when it was like the election the very first one and we started like thinking like we started deciding what candidates we were going to vote for and all this thing I stopped being friends with this girl who was a really great friend to me in college um because she was going to vote for Trump And now the Christian of today, like, I was like, you know what? I need to look for her and hit her up and apologize to her because that shit was fucked up. And I was ignorant. And I, at the time, I didn't know any better. And I really, truly felt at the time, um, especially because some of the things that, you know, Trump would say, like, I felt like he was coming after my community and and Mm -hmm. just really, like, I felt like, how could you, as how could she, as my friend, support this politician who was, like, oppressing my community, like, then you're really not a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. But now that I've become more open-minded, like, I could have felt that way, but I didn't have to lose a friend over it. Because let's be honest, like, Donald Trump is not paying my bills, you know? And, like, I could (laughs) have still had... And he probably don't give a fuck about you. (laughs) (laughs) He definitely does not give a fuck about me. You (laughs) You know? So now, like, I think back and I'm like, yo, I gotta hit her up and apologize because I've grown from that mentality of just canceling people because they don't agree Agree with with me. Like, that is so wrong, you know? And just today I was going off on a rant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I guess like childish in a sense. Yeah. But so what do you think was it that changed that view or like made you kind of start being more open minded? Because you recently were on the left is what you were telling me earlier yeah. today, right? Yeah, I was literally falling off of like the cliff of the left. Like I and don't get me wrong. Um, I'm like I told you, I'm still finding like this new space where I'm in. I kind of feel like I'm in limbo because there's I'm, I'm starting to define like how I actually feel about certain topics, doing my research on on like what my mind is changing about, mm-hmm. also consuming the opposite side of things so I can at least have some sort of balance, balance. Yeah. yeah to my ideas. But um the real trigger for me that kind of like snapped me out of like my echo chamber was when um Trump's Twitter account was banned. Banned. Yeah, when it was deactivated or suspended, whatever the you know. And um As a journalist, I had a really hard time reconciling, you know, freedom of speech and censorship. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And it kind of just made me put things into perspective because as a journalist, like, you know, we always fight to not be censored, right? Yeah. Like, you always pursue the truth above all things, you mm-hmm. know? And um, as much, like, you could go back to my social media, you could look through my Twitter, you can, I was not shy about how I felt, mm-hmm. you know, politically. Like, I was the first one to talk shit when I needed yeah, to talk yeah, yeah. My shit. Like, I'm being honest. Mm-hmm. No, be honest. But, um, but it rubbed me the wrong way. And even at the time feeling like, why is this rubbing me the wrong way was even something that I was questioning. Questioning because I'm like, well, well, this is somebody that you've I, like hated, hate, you know, that you've I talked shit about. I hate this guy. I talk shit about, I I talk shit about so him. You feel like this different, indifferent about it because they banned him on Twitter. Yeah, and it's like I'm like thinking, and I've thought about that. And I was like, the sitting president of the United States is getting is his just mouth getting closed. his mouth closed. That's like he can't speak scary. to his own people. Like, you know, I, I even at the gym that I was in in Miami, I had this whole like conversation with some of the members there because a lot of people are like, oh, but what he's doing is hate speech and this and that. And I this might not make sense to a lot of people, but this made sense to me. And this is how I feel about it. Like, yes, it's ha- like they call it hate speech and they're calling it, you know, they call it hate speech. Right. Mm-hmm. But the way that I see it is. You're allowed to say your hate speech. Yeah. You are allowed to say your hate speech. You're mm-hmm. allowed to say the things that you want to say. He's allowed to tweet whatever he wanted to tweet. Yeah. Um, because that is within his right. And mm-hmm. I'm the type of person that if you feel that way and you associate and you think the way that you're thinking and you're saying that to me, well, good for me because I now know where you stand, what your ideas are, where you're you know what your mindset is about these topics and i don't have to fuck with you because now i know where you stand well that's and that's the problem for me and that's the problem that i have with cancel culture and a person that put that in really took good perspective for me was jay-z uh he did an interview with the new york times uh a few years ago around the time when uh it was that basketball owner who got caught telling that his girlfriend that he didn't want his girlfriend like basically fucking around with black dudes or something like that Mm, and so they canceled him like they basically made him sell his team like got rid of him and so this uh journalist is asking him you know what do you think about that about the fact that they made him like basically banned him from the nba yeah and he said i think it's bullshit and you could tell that the journalist is like thrown black like what like and he's like well why and he says because he's like whenever you do stuff like that all that creates is people to basically for the real racist to hide yeah he's like so now we don't know he's like so now like everybody sees that hey if i don't if if i say that how i really feel then i'm gonna get banned and now you have all these closet racists around and now we don't know who's racist and who's not racist so he's all like because now people are scared to basically be themselves and be open about it 100 percent, and the same thing goes for like like labels and 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 safe spaces and things that we talk about like in lgbt culture i told you earlier mm-hmm. i identify as queer and for me um like labels are helpful mm-hmm. maybe not all the time but depending on what the circumstances like if a place is lgbt friendly well shit sure, i know i'm welcome there and i could like you know wave my wa- rainbow flag as high yeah, yeah, as i yeah. want to because it's cool and if some place is not then i know i gotta be careful because i might do something that might put me in a situation that i don't want to be in like let's uh-huh. be honest like i also think that us in trying to be so careful and trying to be so politically correct we've also just kind of like muddied like the waters like way too much you know what i'm saying and this whole cancel culture thing is really fucking annoying to me and it's it's it pisses me off to be quite frank because i'm like wait a minute so y'all mean to tell me that y'all have never made a mistake that humans are supposed to be perfect that i'm not allowed to grow from something i said or something bad that i did or whatever you think that the same girl that I was when I was 15, when I was wilding out, being uncontrollable, that I my mom couldn't even get a grip on me, is the same woman sitting in front of you today at 30 years old. And if I had to pay for those things now, yeah. that would really suck because I'm not that same girl. Person, I'm yeah. a woman. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you've learned from them and you've grown from them. And so now, the, the moment, the quickest way to scare the living daylights out of someone is to call them a racist. The quickest way to scare the daylights out of someone is to, like, now, um, 
you know, say that they're sexually harassing you, um, to do like the, an expose on them. You know, I really believe that it's 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 scary. Yeah. So how we're how we're turning things. Being a journalist, do you think the media plays a large part? In all of this? I think the media plays a large part, but on a more micro level, I think that we are really the ones that play a part in it. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like, I think that we also perpetuate and, like, we also push these narratives depending on our beliefs. And as much as people want to be unbiased... I'm gonna say it. we're fucking biased. Well, we're humans. We're like, human you know, beings. We have our own like, thoughts and our own free own will. Thoughts. And know? I try my best to not insert myself in my stories or in what my sources think, like to the very best of mm-hmm. my professional abilities. But behind, you know, behind closed doors, when it's all said and done, you know, I have my personal opinions about the interview or how the person was. That's not gonna make it to the final mm-hmm. copy. Those are my personal biases. But I'm biased, too, because I'm a person and I have my thoughts. But do you feel like the media today, the things that they do publish come off biased? (sighs) Yeah, Yeah. I do. I do do because it's kind of like I told you earlier, like once you see it, you can't unsee it. it. Yeah. And so now everything, everything, everything is racialized and, you know, it's not. um, So when I say that, it's not to say that I don't believe that there is, you know, struggle and that there is oppression and that people are discriminated against. You know, I told Absolutely. you, you yeah. know, examples of me being discriminated against when I was with my wife in certain places or how mm-hmm. people looked at us and stuff like that. But um, but nonetheless, like, I didn't always walk around being, you know, targeted, you know, when yeah. I was with her. And I just think that um, if I, like... If we continuously only focus on like this racism topic, all it continues to do is is really really divide us in Miami. Create racism. Yeah, it creates racism in Miami. Um, the Latino and the Black culture, in my opinion, is not as united as it could be. When you go to Atlanta, you see like interracial couples, interracial babies, like mixed marriages, uh, Latinos with black people, black people with white people. Same thing here. I see it a lot, too. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. a lot of mixed couples, you know, how you guys call white people widows with Mexicans and so on and so forth. Uh-huh. Like it's and nobody fucking bats an eyelash like everybody's chilling. You know, yeah. I even think that like people like celebrate that. I've seen it. Like people will smile at you. They'll be happy. They're they're like, oh look at this widow with this, you know, ethnic chick or whatever, you know? But um in Miami it doesn't feel like the community, the black community and the Latino community is as united. And what I like to do in my journalism over there was on Meet the Mondays on my podcast, like really try to diversify and give like as many different people sit at my table so that they could you know express themselves and talk and and i really tried to build that bridge of like the black and latino community Mm -hmm. and so back to your question about like do i think that the media does do that is because they do and like especially um in like in like the media like the mainstream media that is very Mm left-leaning I would sometimes listen to things and me here someone who hated donald trump and who who like you know, and hate is a very strong word, but yeah. I'm again being honest about no, what I felt because this is all on here. social media. Like no, y'all can check. Sure. Yeah, I'm not the first. You know, definitely don't hide here. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. I'm being honest, but even me, <laughs> like I try to, I try to find like the biases in the stories that I'd be listening to, or like listening to something on NPR, and I'm like, yo, I can't stand this guy, but come on, let's be fair on our reporting here, like. Y'all are trashing this dude, yeah. like straight trashing this dude. And um, and I'm I'm feeling like this is not fair. And I don't even agree with this dude. Like, yeah. so it was very weird to me to come to that conclusion and to feel like, wait a minute, what's going on? Like, I'm getting way too bombarded with with this narrative, but what the hell's happening on the other side? Yeah. And so what led me like i'll give you an example i had i had i've never actually talked about this before but i um i wrote a story about a running community in miami and when i turned in the story um you know before the final once the final copy got published my editor the intro to my story 
he um, inserted the Ahmad Abri story, which is the the gentleman that was running who got attacked. Yes. And he inserted that into my story. My editor did. I hadn't even added that to my story. Now, full wow. disclosure, he asked me, is it okay? Like, is it okay if I include this? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's it's relevant. Um, but definitely, like, I also see that um, now looking back and in retrospect, you know, I'd still tell him to insert that story now. But if you read the story, it reads something it's sort of like, you know, in a in a in a time where a black body seen running could also mean like, you know, death or can signify like something dangerous, you know, this community is doing XYZ to like make running a to positive experience for, for for black people. And um and that's very true. Like like uh I was reading today about these biases that we have, like these I think they're called um and correct me if I'm wrong subconscious or unconscious biases where like you you have like this um underlying like racist or like subconscious like racism like so i'll give you an example like you know i'm in my car by myself and like a black guy walks in front of my car like i'll hit the lock you know yeah because yeah, yeah. i'm scared uh-huh. they, they classify that as like a um i think it's a subconscious or like un- a subconscious bias. biases I, yeah I, get what you're biased. I know what you're talking about so <laughs> So, um, so looking back and, and, and I, I was okay with that being inserted in my story because that is the truth that does happen. And in the black community, let's be honest, um, you know, the, like these things are happening, Mm -hmm. but I also think my mind wasn't going in that space. And my editor put that in my story. I hadn't even seen it that way. And also maybe I hadn't seen it that way. And to be fair, because I am not black and I don't have, I don't, I don't have like that perspective and yeah. that view on life. I co- I'm a Latina. I'm a brown girl, mm-hmm. indigenous, and I have my own point of view on life. And I was coming into a different community to report on something that happens there. And so just kind of like to answer your question, I do think that um, we are inserting a lot of like a lot of racial undertones in our stories um, when, and things are racialized a lot more now that don't even have to be racialized. Yeah. That I don't think... I don't it's like, even, why did you have to take it there? Why? Yeah. Like, why did you? You know, like, I, I, I've I, been hearing about the Dr. Seuss thing and I don't mm-hmm. even know. I haven't even looked into it because I was just like, I can't. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, no. Nah. Like, we're really about to have this conversation. Like, yeah. why are we doing this? You know, like... I didn't grow up watching cartoons and think, how racist is this cartoon? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, as a child, we're, as adults, inserting our adult, like... Mm. Opinion. Opinion and yeah. thoughts. Well, the adults are making these cartoons. So, you know, like... And I guess that's, like, the big argument for cancel culture is, like, well, that's where the indoctrination happened. Mm-hmm. Is like, And it's like, yeah, that makes sense, but I don't think racism is a very massive issue like affecting black and brown communities today yeah. you know what i'm saying uh and i mean i understand that you know jim crow ended in like the 60s and all that and like i get it you know like it sucked as a time in america that i'm not particularly proud of i don't think many people are these days you know but when you look back and you look at the people that actually implemented those laws and did those things you find that there were left leaning they were democrats like you know that actually made all this stuff happen and so it's like why you in know all my reporting in miami and the communities that made me i feel like the journalists that i am today were always the black was and has been the black community and i've always done my best to um uplift in w- what i feel i could uplift the black community uplift you know black and brown communities but mostly black because that was like the neighborhoods that i lived in um and the people that gave me the time of day for me to share their stories and the people that i just had the most access to and the ones that invested in me and i invested in them as well um and so i always tried my best to make my reporting as positive as i could and so then I meet Candace Owens, like, on social media. (laughs) Uh And I really had to question, like, am I perpetuating this victimization of black people? Or am I really celebrating them for who they are? Yeah. And I had to check myself because here I'm thinking that I'm doing the best job that I possibly can. And it's really made... And I know that I have. And I'm proud of the work that I've done. No, of course, absolutely. 
I, I, I know that I have. You don't regret and don't ever regret anything no, in your life. And you I know? don't. And I don't. And I'll be the first one to say, like, it's not enough for me. Like, it's a lesson, you know, like, but in these lessons that I'm learning, I'm also having to unlearn a lot of the things that I've learned, yeah. you know, and a lot of like this echo chamber that I found myself in. And so I, I see a personality like Kansas Owens on social media, who is a black person who has this whole other perspective on the black community and on yeah. Latinos. Cause she talks about Latinos too. No, she does. And I'm like, shit. She talks about minorities in general, about you minorities. know, and it's like the biggest thing affecting black and Hispanic communities is fatherless homes. Like, yeah. you know, that's like really what's, the driver and like if you look and even barack obama said it you know even barack obama said that if you grow up in a home without a father you are like five times more likely to end up in prison to end up in jail to end up in a life of crime or having an std a young pregnancy exactly. an abortion like so and things, it's yeah. like yeah but you gotta look at like i'm reading candace owen's book right now and like one of the things that was in there that. you will borrow it when <laughs> i'm done with it <laughs> i've already promised you it yeah. so <laughs> i haven't promised anyone else it so <laughs> it's yours but um yeah one of the things that she was talking about is like the implementation of planned parenthood and that i wanted to say that she said like 60 percent of planned parenthoods are within walking distance of black and brown communities and it's like that's where they really pushed like abortions and this idea of having an abortion or even being on welfare was in these communities and it's like they're basically trying to obliterate an entire race by not allowing these people to populate i guess in a sense or reproduce and and that's again where i find myself in this space of limbo that i've told you about because as someone who currently doesn't have health insurance and at the time when I was you know a teenager and having sex and you know experimenting I didn't have health insurance at the time either and places like Planned Parenthood worked for me because yeah. I was able to go and get um uh like a pap smear yeah, that I needed yeah, 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 to get yeah. I was able to get care for free mm -hmm. I was able to go to these clinics and take care of myself because I wanted to have sex but I didn't want to be a statistic and yeah. let's be honest like a lot of people preach about abstinence but I don't think that's in my not, personal yeah. opinion that's not the way to go because kids will experiment and if they're not educated they will get pregnant they will yeah. get a CD so having a planned parenthood or having a community clinic worked for me because mm -hmm. at the time I wanted to have sex and I didn't want to get pregnant. And I had a conversation with my mom and I said, yo, I'm, I'm having sex. I'm going to start having sex. Or I don't remember how the conversation went. If I was having sex or I wanted to have sex, but I was like, I don't want to get pregnant. I don't want to catch an STD. Like I need you to have this conversation with me. And you know, at the time she wouldn't have the conversation with me because she thought ignoring it was going to make me not want to do it. Yeah. And so I had to go with my little boyfriend at the time. And I was like, yo, like, if we want to have sex, like, we got to figure this out and do it the safest way possible. Yeah. And so it did help for me to be a poor brown girl or, you know, whatever they would have classified me as, mm -hmm. as in their system who went there to get care. And I was able to get free care. Yeah. And I didn't end up a statistic. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm definitely not anti-choice. I'm pro-choice. I mean, I think like if you don't, if you don't have any business having a child, then you shouldn't have one. Yeah. So I'm like definitely not it's against not limbo abortion. Yeah, it's, yeah. I'm kind of in the same area because I know Planned Parenthood does do a lot of good things. Yeah. Uh, but I guess what I was just trying to get at was like the implementation of like why they even started it Candace Owens visits that in her book yeah. about the lady who started it and why she started it and like the things that she said when she started it. Oh, yeah. And, and well, same thing how they have so many liquor stores in the hood and they barely have grocery stores. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like those things do make you question, like, what are you really trying to do our people? Like, are you guys trying, like, how are we going to thrive, you know, when we don't have access to like, you know, grocery stores and like yeah. fresh fruits and, you know, like. It, it it just feeding eating all this processed food and like yeah, you know and yeah and and that's that limbo that I was telling you where there's just certain things that happen where I'm still trying to figure out how I feel about certain things. I'm sure mm -hmm. reading her book is gonna open my eyes even more, but there's just certain things that I'm like mm, I can see what you guys are saying, but I don't necessarily agree because I was in those shoes before. Yeah. I had to walk that walk and be in that space and having those resources did help me, you know? Yeah. And so I am very much like, I can see how certain resources do help our community, especially because a lot of our community is like, we're by the bootstraps. Like a lot of us are first generation. A lot of us, you know, um, 
just like we there's a lot of us that had access you know and and had resources and we're in the suburbs there's a lot of us that didn't you know so yeah. i think that um i know she talks about coming from poverty and like alcoholic parents and a broken mm -hmm. home and stuff like that and so it's just it's just relative you know yeah like everybody has different perspectives I no guess, for sure you know i mean everybody has different upbringings like nobody's life is the same yeah. you know so and i mean that's like the beauty of life though it's like we're like this big equation yeah you know of just like different upbringings or different uh experiences yeah for you know sure. and that's what makes us us yeah and so it's like for me, I guess the reason why I say, like, for me, like, racism isn't, like, a big prevalent issue in our community is because, like, as the generations go on, like, racism's fading away. Yeah. Like, you got to think, like, in the 60s, like, racism was still a thing. Jim Crow was still a thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Segregation was still a thing. So, yeah, there's a bunch of old farts walking around, you know, that are probably racist as shit. But That's we not, don't fuck with them. Yeah, and but we don't like, fuck with them, yeah. but they're not in our and age group, our and they're group, not the yeah. people that we're interacting with every single day. But if you asked our age group, like, hey, are you racist, or what do you feel about these kind of people? Like, 10 times out of yeah, 10, they're... Well, not, not even 10 times out of 10, you'll still find them, because that's how they were raised, right? Because they were just... It was passed down, yeah. right? But you may only find a few hundred. And yeah. then if you ask the generation behind us how they feel, you may only find... 50 and then if you ask the generation behind then you eventually maybe find 10 and eventually this whole idea of like oh you're brown or you're black or whatever is gonna just yeah fade away and also kind of like just to like change the topic um i wanted to kind of go back to the fact that we met at the gym yeah. and i kind of wanted to turn the tables and ask you a little bit like what um what made you want to go like to the gym and get yourself together and like start working on yourself physically and and like what was that journey like for you mm. man <laughs> that's like a five-year-long story <laughs> honestly well i was in the military so I was always in shape in high school and like growing up in my late early 20s, I was in shape. I could easily run 12 miles. I'm a runner. I love to run distance and I could run. When I graduated boot camp, like I was pretty fit, pretty in shape. But I mean, I was Marine Corps boot camp. So I mean, like, obviously, I hope I was in shape. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I was in badass shape, but I used to run all the time. When I had my son, like I kind of slowed me down and I just got a job and I started working. And then like, I wouldn't say I necessarily start necessarily started letting myself go. But a lot of things started happening into my life. Like I lost my dad, like, you know, so then I would how to carry on the responsibility like my dad was like my safety net so whenever i was in financial trouble my dad was the person i'd call and be like hey i can't pay my rent can you help me and he would be like yeah here you go pay me back uh so he passed away and i just like guess throughout this whole process like i gained a lot of weight um in september i was weighing 242 pounds that's how much i weighed 242 pounds and i like what was your breaking point where you're like no nah, i gotta do something about this uh i don't know i just didn't like I found myself being really depressed, really tired, really like unhappy in a sense with myself, you know, and I was being dependent on like female partners to be make myself feel better, like committed relationships, not like multiple female partners, but like committed relationships to like get this fulfillment for myself that I could only find within myself. Like mm -hmm. I grew to like hate myself in a sense. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. I just did because like I knew what I was and what I had become. You know, and I had every excuse in the book. And so one of my buddies, he actually had opened up a gym and like did his own thing, like did open up a gym and like a workout program. And uh, he was more like my therapist, but we were friends before. So like before I even joined his gym, we were friends. And so I called him one day and I was like, yeah, dude, like I want to see like what's up. Like, you know, I want to see like I want to lose weight like this, this and that. And he was like yeah, for sure. Let's do it. And so like, I just kind of opened up to him and was like, yeah, dude, like, this is what's been going on. Like, you know, this, this and that. And he just like, really breathed positivity into my life. Oh, and like yeah. the biggest thing I learned from him is like, you can always find 30 minutes a day to like work out and like better yourself. And once you do, like, you're going to feel a lot better. And even though it sucks in the moment, like the after effect and what you feel afterwards is like what it's about. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like, 
but that's like the definition of life and yeah. like that's kind of like what he kind of taught me is like that's like the definition of life like life sucks mm -hmm. you know but like life sucks at certain moments and then you get through it and then you prosper it, and that doesn't seem as bad like yeah. you know what i'm saying and yeah. so like i just kind of applied that thought to working out and so i started working out and i ended up losing like 30 pounds oh yeah yeah so Good the only you. reason why i'd like started going to fit crew and like why i started doing all that was because i just wanted more yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I had lost all this weight. I learned how to count macros and I learned how to do all this stuff. But, um, yeah, I just wanted more. I wanted more workouts. And he like, I don't want to say like anything bad about his gym because his program's great. Like he helps a lot of people. Uh, but you wanted more. And so then I just reached out to them at Fit Crew and was like, hey, like, you know, I know y'all got a program, this, this and that. Like, what's up? And he was like, yeah, for sure. Come on. So, yeah, I like for me, the gym is also like my church, you know, like. I I know that I if I don't work out I'm depressed and I'm sad yeah. and it definitely helps me like stay in balance and and just like deal with everything that I'm dealing on an emotional level like for sure and so for me going to the gym and I've been going to the gym for years now like I was doing CrossFit already for maybe six years or so like I've been going to the gym for a while and I've you know I haven't always been active but once I found CrossFit that was it like I was hooked and um, I'm not like the fittest person in the world mm -hmm. I'll eat my snacks I'll do whatever I know you're beasting it today yo I don't know what got into me today <laughs> <laughs> I was like I was like yo I need a because in CrossFit like I was lifting way more weight than i do at the gym now with you know the gym yeah, we yeah, go yeah, to yeah. but the thing about our gym is that they put cardio with weights yeah and that's a whole different ball game no for but sure for me fitness has really so i found fitness because this guy introduced me to crossfit to that particular mm -hmm. gym i was going to which was like a small like you know mom and pop gym and um but you know parallel to that experience i was also i was sick and um and part of me getting healthy again was having a gym routine to and work out. yeah and like making sure i did really like strong workouts like they had to be like very hard on the body and um adopting like a plant based lifestyle and I did that. And I was able to honestly take myself off of the medication I was on. Wow. Um, even my doctor couldn't explain to herself why I had reversed, you know, what was going, going on, on with me. And so for anyone listening, you know, at the time they had told me I had PCOS, which is basically, um, you know, I'll make it, you know, simple and just it's like a hormonal imbalance, let's mm -hmm. say. And so um, to regulate the hormones, you like really have to be, you know, on your P's and Q's with your diet, like try to reduce anything with hormones. So like lactose and milk and just like meats and all of these things like processed foods, like fresh vegetables as plant based as possible and a strong, strong workout routine so crossfit was insane to me i had never done anything like that and mm -hmm. had like a gym and yo i just started going in crossfit going vegan or veggie vegetarian plant-based and i cured myself and my doctor was like whatever you're doing like you keep doing it you have to keep <laughs> doing it because how it affected me was that i hadn't had a period for a year like can you imagine being a woman and not getting a period for a year like your hormones yeah. must be fucking out of control yeah and so i started regulating my my cycle getting healthy again and like just like i really felt like being at the gym for me, like, I feel like a badass bitch. Like, yeah. I work out because when, like, the zombie apocalypse comes, like, I'm going to be able to outrun a <laughs> motherfucker. I'm going to be able right. to, to carry, you know, my mom or carry yeah. my future children or whatever the case is. And I want to be, like, a strong-ass woman that, like, you know, God forbid, like, whoever my partner is at the time, whether it's a woman or a man, like, whomever I end up with knows that, like, yo, if I break a leg, like, she's going to be got, able to... She got me. She's got me. <laughs> you know, like, I have one kid on one hip the other one and i you know my mom on my back and i'm hey, running going. like i just want to feel like the strongest sexiest version of myself yeah and i don't need to have a six-pack or whatever i just need to be able to get through that workout and like mm -hmm. whenever we finish those workouts at the gym i'm just say yo like i even, did it <laughs> yeah like even before we get to the next workout and and you're like yo like 
<laughs> one more and i'm one like more. what are you talking about like that's what i always say <laughs> i'm done yeah and you're like yo we really do have like one more round i'm like <laughs> yeah 12 minutes that's yeah. it 24 minutes like you know it's, so i say like hey just that's it you can't like that's what i was explaining to uh one of the other ladies at the gym the other day i don't think you were there because mm-hmm. she was like oh this sucks like blah 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 and i was like you can't stop time yeah you know you can't stop time time's continuous so yeah. You got 12 minutes left. That's it. And guess what? At the end of those 12 minutes, like, you're good. I'm that's not something lie. I learned in the military. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it ends. At some point, it has to end. <laughs> you know? So yeah. it's like, that's what the keeps suffering. me going is just like, you know, at some point, the suffering has to end. And honestly, you should really embrace those suffering moments. Like, Yo, you should that's really. That's life. Yeah. You should embrace the suck because I feel like those are like. The moments where you learn the most. Oh, yeah. It's like uh, I used to have – like I played football growing up and coaches would tell us all the time, adversity introduces a man to himself. Yeah. So it's like when you're going through something hard, you really find out who you are. Yes. You really find out how strong am I, how can – like how mentally tough am I. Yeah. You know, because I think that's like the biggest thing about boot camp is people are like, oh, that had to be so physically hard. And I'm like, it wasn't though. It was actually physically easy. The part it was hard was here. Mentally. It was in the mind. Yeah. Because it's like they break you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They break you down and make you feel like nothing and then try to build you back up. Like, you know, that's into crazy. feeling like a badass. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's like, yeah, you leave feeling feeling badass but like the whole time you're there you get everything ripped away from you you know you don't have any contact with your family your friends like everybody looks the same you know it's all uniformed and like you lose your identity in a sense you know and so it's like mentally it's it was rough like you know it was like man and a lot of those people like luckily i had grown up with a father who like pretty much raised me this way anyways so like uh i didn't have as many problems but i did see people like struggle that struggle mentally like break and like quit and wanted like just leave because they had maybe just never been away from home they've never like experienced somebody yelling at them before like talking to them like at that tone or degrading them in that way Damn. and then just like you know breaking them in a i sense. always thought i couldn't be in the military my ex-girlfriend was um in the air force mm-hmm. and um you know she's a leo i know we yeah. talked about that <laughs> earlier um not that you're a leo but she's yeah. a leo and uh she's also very like organized i mean i don't know how she is today but i'm sure she's still like that and um there was just things in the military, like I would go visit her in her base. And there was just things that I was like, yo, I could never do this because I'm just, I feel like I'm, I'm such an, like an individual, like my style, my swag, like the way that I am. <laughs> like, I'm just, you know, I have this sauce about yeah. me and I'm just, you a know. A lot of people say that and you'd be really surprised. Cause like a lot of people do say that. And like, that's like the same thing. Oh yeah. Like I didn't go to the military because like, I'm not going to let anybody talk to me like that and tell me what to do. But the it's like, is fine. yeah, the but doing I, is I fine. Get you're but, saying but they're it's, looking the same like everybody else and stuff like that that's where that gets what gets me. you like, yeah mm, like i, I can't do that <laughs> i'm like i wouldn't want to dress the same as everybody else i wouldn't want to look the same but i can understand like the values of it yeah. and like what it's i mean you once you get discipline. into a unit and into like what they call the fleet like it changes yeah. you know it's like the way that it is in training is totally nothing like the fleet like once you get to the regular side of it and like you're in it like I mean, you get to go home, you get to do whatever you want. Like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's rules, of course, but like, you know, so you do get your individual moments. But like, when it comes to work, it's like, yeah, you have to wear the same clothes as everyone else and everything like that. But I mean, you meet people and they're their own people. And, you know, everybody, you just learn everybody has a different walk of life. And like, they're all here for whatever reason they're there for. Yeah, I mean, I think that that's like the zest of life, just like meeting people learning their human experience like how i told you earlier like in my podcast too it's the same thing like there's different people different walks of life like different perspectives different you know ways that they see things but like i think that that's really just like the beauty of it like understanding like what we're out here for what's this yeah. person's story like what connects us all or what doesn't what happened to this person that changed them yeah. you know and 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 like you know i ask myself like how can I be of service to this individual? Like, what is my presence going to do to make this person better? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like identifying the people that come into your life and realizing like, you know, what purpose do I serve in their life? Like, why did this, I'm, cause I'm a big believer, like, and I guess you could call it spiritual, like that. I believe that people come into our lives for certain reasons, like, you know, and there's reasons behind it. Like, 
So it's like, why did I meet you? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why did we meet? Like, yeah. I didn't know you did a podcast, you know? Yeah. And then today you tell me you did a podcast and you're looking for a studio. And I'm like, dude, I got a studio in my house. What are you talking about? Right. Like, and then to find out you live 10 minutes away from here. And I'm like, Yo, that's dude, nuts. like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, but, and it's like, but it probably doesn't even end here. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's probably so much more to build on out of like, you know, this one Sit, this that one situation you i know? will say that like manifesting has been a real thing in my life like yeah. manifesting for me i manifest so hard sometimes that i have to be very specific i'll call it the universe or god or like the higher power um when i manifest yo like as crazy as it sounds, because right now I'm in a period of growth for sure in my mm -hmm. life. You know, I, I, I've been going through some personal things that have really like pushed me and I'm in a period of growth where I'm changing right now. I feel mm -hmm. it. I, you know, it's just, I'm you different. You see it happening. Yeah. And manifesting lately has been so crazy and so real, so beautiful mm -hmm. for both good and bad. Yeah. Um, and for change, ultimately for change. And, uh, on Monday, I was just looking at a studio because, you know, I haven't podcasted. I haven't done an episode in a while. And I'm just itching to get back to feeling like myself. Like, For right sure. before we turn on the mics, I was, like, already getting, like, that, that feeling yeah. in me. Like, yeah, I know the yo, feeling I'm in you're my talking shit. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I'm in my it. zone, in my <laughs> element. And so manifesting speaking about manifesting i'm like okay i gotta i gotta meet you know who do i need to meet who can i meet that podcast where can i find a studio like i'm i feel like i literally got thrown in the middle of like nowhere yeah and like life is like all right try time to, for you try to figure to it out your, try like, to live your life <laughs> like navigate like, yeah like figure this but with out no resources <laughs> and so and like let me just give you like two quick examples you know um as we finish our conversation but um you know, I was out at a bar with friends and, you know, a friend of a friend came up to the friend and basically like ha they hadn't seen each other like in four years or so. Mm -hmm. And they were catching up and, you know, whatever. And the dude, uh, not my friend, but the other dude was like, yo, like, you know, I'm running the studio now. I'm like managing these artists like I'm an audio engineer you know, like just like Mateo and just like, you know, um, I'm doing this thing and I have the studio and I'm managing another studio. And then the friend, you know, was like, oh, well, Christian, you know, just moved from Miami and she was looking, looking for, for a studio thing. and she wants to do her podcast. And, you know, we linked up and that's how I found out about him on Monday. But I had wrote, I have a... a a whiteboard uh -huh. in my on um, in my room and it was like you need to work on meet the mondays and like i just been having this itch like i have to get back to myself you know sure. i'm a creative like if i'm not creating there's pieces of me that are not living like that's just what it is absolutely and in another small corner i had put read a new book and so even looking back at my whiteboard today, I'm like, holy shit, like I'm crossing off these things that I've been manifesting. And yeah. so, you know, meeting you, we had kind of been linking up at the same time for the gym. And we just, yeah, just on to a be, whim too. on a whim, just like working at the same stations and like getting through the workouts and you pushing me, me pushing you. And like out of nowhere, you're just like, oh, no, like I had mentioned to you, like, man, these last two days, I've just been really tired. Like, it's hard for me to get through these workouts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, have you? been sleeping and inside of myself i'm like no i haven't been like i've been staying up just thinking yeah. about life and you know the shit you know yeah the, i didn't know anything about you at that no. point i don't know what you were going through i didn't, I didn't, I didn't, didn't even, even know, know you lived name. here only for a month yeah i knew your name you knew my name yeah i didn't know your name i knew your name I would just always be like, yeah, boo boo. That's what I call you. <laughs> yeah, boo boo. And I so, know your name because Bruce asked you, and then you said Chris, and I was like, oh, oh okay, okay, yeah. But we didn't formally introduce. No, we didn't. Yeah. Never formally had introduced. And ourselves. so, so you said, oh, you know, I've been staying up late because I've been podcasting, and that immediately, like, you're like, what? What? <laughs> Wait, you're a podcaster too, and and now look at us. Yeah, We're and you know what's even studio. crazier though is that. When you had first got there, I don't know if you remember when you first got there, you said, I wasn't going to come today. But then I remember yesterday I told you I was. Yes. So I did. And I yeah. was like, yeah. well, cool. And then yeah. it's like now it ended and like, look, we're at the end of the day. And like, here we are sitting in the studio just running a podcast. Yeah. You know, and I mean, that was like the big thing, too, is I was like after talking to you out in the parking lot, I was like, just come through. Like, you know, even if like in theory we don't publish or whatever, like even like with this podcast like 
get back in your element. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Get back in the feeling. Like, is it to make you feel better? Like, it you does. know, than what the way you felt this morning probably when you woke up yeah and that's the series of like this growth period i'm on like some days i'm really high some days i'm really low like it's just i'm just i'm going through the growth i'm going through the notions and i'm working on myself but just manifesting in my life has been really real lately and um and and look at me here i am with you having this great conversation and so i'm very glad to be here in houston i feel like you know even if it's for a season or even if it's long term you know time will tell but like from these moments in houston even like from meeting you and just having these moments like how can i not be grateful and in love with how these things are turning off yeah no for sure i mean there's still hard times to come i'm sure you know there's still struggles to come but i mean you're just gonna learn from them and grow from them i mean anything in houston like we've been here our whole lives (laughs) so you want to explore the city like you know we're down (laughs) like you know we'll go explore the city with you like you know uh I don't know what museums you've gone to or where you've been at so far, but... So tomorrow, I'm going to go to the Fine Arts Museum. That was a good one. Yeah, I'm going to go to that one because um, uh, it just looks really cool on, like, Instagram. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and I, I love going to museums, period. Mm-hmm. Like, that's nothing new for me. But I went to the... I think it was your natural... Science. Mu- the Science Museum, mm-hmm. yeah. And I had, like, a cool-ass date by myself. I went to the Butterfly Garden. I did the um what do you call it where you see the stars and like you like yeah yeah the, the observatory pla- the, thing yeah, the like planetarium t- or pla- whatever yeah the planetarium planetarium yeah. that's what it's called and um i did that and then i walked the whole museum and actually the the background to my to my phone is like from one of the like oh exhibits. the exhibits yeah nice it's like gem- like they have natural stones like a big room full of just natural stones mm-hmm. and i carry stones with me all the time oh, like wow. energetically yeah, yeah, so yeah. when i walked in there i was like oh my god like this, this is, is cool. just calling me <laughs> yeah. so i've had just really dope experiences being here in houston and i'm i'm giving myself like those moments and i went to the botanical garden y'all have a bomb ass botanical you know it's like funny because you talk about these things and it's like i've been there but like to me it's like i haven't been there in forever yeah because it's like i live here you know what i'm saying so it's just there so i mean i'm sure it was the same way for you and when you lived in miami people were probably like oh i want to see this i want to see that and you're like why yeah (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) it's just there nah but it's been dope being here and like i just feel like i'm gonna continue meeting like like like-minded people and even if they're not like-minded thank god for like growth and me having like this uh, mindset now of just being tolerant of people yeah. that are not like me it sounds like something so you know basic and normal but like cancel culture has really brainwashed a lot of us to just be like well fuck you you don't think like me so that's it you're yeah. done and i think that's the know. beauty of texas is like texans respect texans and like i mean it's very few times where you'll see people like just going at it because they disagree on something i mean you'll see it on social media mainly but when it comes to like being in the streets like everybody's pretty accepting of everyone i love it you know I love um, it if you do something awesome. fucked up we're gonna call you out on this. yeah and everybody's gonna <laughs> and, but everybody's gonna call you out on yeah. it you know and it's like you know so but yeah. i mean the city's great I mean, we're glad to have you. Definitely you so welcome much. to Texas. Thank like, you. you. Thank know. you for having me on this episode no, tonight. No, for sure. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to hearing you guys record whoever comes next. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we record everybody. I mean, literally. Yeah. I record. If you work in a warehouse, I'd record you. Hell like, yeah. you know, just to like right. hear your perspective of yeah. life. Like, you know, like what have you been through? Like, what has I've always gotten wanted you to, to this that. point? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because like, another thing we have in common is we both work in worked in logistics. Yes, yeah, exactly. So we work with people in warehouses and yeah. yo, those people will tell you about life. Yeah, for sure. About things that they've gone through. Yeah. So, Chris, if people want to continue their conversation with you and find out more about Meet Them Mondays, where can they find you? Um, definitely the podcasts are up on Apple uh, Podcasts and on Spotify. Um, Meet Them Mondays. You could just search that. I'll come up at Meet Them Mondays on Instagram. My personal handle on Instagram is Call Her Christian, and um, that's Christian C H R. 
and um if you know anybody wants to collaborate please feel free to hit me on the dms at meet the mondays i'm very open to collaborating meet the mondays is a culture and lifestyle podcast so we'll definitely be diving into like these topics like we did today um and yeah thank you so much for having me and thank you for being here and if you liked what you heard today and you want to learn more about life without limits follow us on instagram at life wo limits one and for all our new content and to stay up to date with when we'll be dropping more episodes and thank you for coming out.